In the heart of the prehistoric Australian landscape, during the late Pleistocene epoch, a formidable predator roamed the ancient rivers and dense forests. This predator was none other than the Quincana, a genus of extinct Mecosuchine crocodilians. Unlike the crocodiles we know today, the Quincana was a terrestrial beast, adapted to life on land, and it was a fearsome sight to behold. Unfortunately, there are very few pictures of Quincana that are available for use, forcing me to use AI to represent it. My apologies for this. The name Quincana is inspired by the Quincan spirit figures depicted in Aboriginal rock art in the Cape York Peninsula in Queensland, Australia. These spirit figures are an integral part of the mythology and cultural heritage of the Aboriginal people in the region. These fossils paint a vivid picture of a predator that stood out in the prehistoric Australian ecosystem. Measuring up to 6 metres in length, Quincana was a giant among its terrestrial peers. Its robust body, long legs and sharp teeth were perfectly adapted for hunting on land, making it one of the top predators of its time. Quincana's anatomy tells a story of evolutionary adaptation. Unlike modern crocodiles, which have evolved to be semi-aquatic with short legs and powerful tails for swimming, Quincana had long, powerful legs, suited for running and chasing down prey on land. Its teeth were another distinctive feature. Modern crocodiles have conical teeth designed for gripping and holding onto slippery prey, but Quincana's teeth were sharp and serrated, ideal for slicing through the flesh of its terrestrial prey. There were four recognised species of Quincana that lived in Australia. They all exhibit various differences, primarily in terms of their size, fossil location, and some morphological features. Here's a detailed breakdown of the differences among the species. The Quincana fortirostrum is one of the best known species of Quincana. It was a large terrestrial predator with individuals potentially reaching up to 6 metres in length. It had robust, heavily built jaws with sharp, serrated teeth, suggesting it was a powerful terrestrial predator. Fossils of Quincana fortirostrum have been primarily found in the Riversley World Heritage Area in northwestern Queensland. The Quincana barbara was slightly smaller than Quincana fortirostrum, but it was still a significant predator. It was similar to Quincana fortirostrum, but with some variations in skull and jaw structure that indicate differences in feeding strategies or prey preferences. The Quincana timora was generally smaller compared to Quincana fortirostrum and Quincana barbara. This species exhibits unique features in its limb bones, suggesting it might have been more adapted to a particular type of terrestrial habitat compared to its relatives. Fossils have been discovered in the Northern Territory indicating a more widespread distribution. And lastly, the Quincana Mibaldi, which was comparable to Quincana Timara, and it was generally smaller than Quincana fortirostrum. It displays distinct differences in the structure of its vertebrae and limb bones, which might indicate variations in locomotion and lifestyle. It was found in Queensland, contributing to the understanding of this genus's geographical spread. In this video, we're going to be primarily discussing the Quincana fortirostrum, Imagine the Australian landscape during the Pleistocene Epoch. The continent was a patchwork of diverse habitats, ranging from arid deserts to lush rainforests. Megafauna roamed these lands, including massive marsupials like the Diprotodon, a giant wombat-like creature, and Procoptodon, the short-faced kangaroo. In this world, Quincana was a dominant force. It likely preyed upon these megafauna, using its powerful jaws and sharp teeth to bring down its prey. The hunting strategy of Quincana was likely different from that of modern crocodiles. While modern crocs rely on stealth and ambush, often lurking in the water until prey comes close, Quincana's long legs suggest it was more of an active hunter. It could have stalked its prey through the dense underbrush, using its keen senses to detect the movements of other animals. Once it identified a target, Quincana would have used its speed and power to chase down and overpower its prey. The discovery of Quincana fossils has provided valuable insights into the evolution of crocodilians. But it wasn't until the 20th century that paleontologists began to understand the significance of this unique genus. The fossils revealed a creature that was markedly different from other crocodilians, showcasing the incredible diversity and adaptability of this group of reptiles. One of the most significant fossil sites for Quincana is the Riversley World Heritage Area in northwestern Queensland. 
Riversley is renowned for its exceptionally well-preserved fossils, which have provided the window into the past ecosystems of Australia. Here, paleontologists have uncovered a treasure trove of Quincana fossils, allowing them to reconstruct the appearance and lifestyle of this remarkable predator. The extinction of Quincana, like many other megafauna, is a subject of ongoing research and debate. Aridification and an increase in forest fires are thought to have been the main factor for the extinction of Quincana, but there is no evidence for human involvement. As the Pleistocene Epoch came to an end, Australia underwent significant climatic changes, becoming drier and less hospitable for many large animals. There is Aboriginal rock art that exists which is thought to depict the Quincana. It's incredible to think that indigenous inhabitants had to deal with such a ferocious predator. The story of Quincana is not just a tale of a prehistoric predator, but also a reflection of the dynamic and ever-changing nature of life on Earth. It highlights the incredible adaptability of crocodilians, a group that has survived for millions of years through numerous mass extinctions and environmental changes. Quincana's existence adds a fascinating chapter to the history of crocodilians, showing that these reptiles were once as diverse on land as they are in the water today. Today the legacy of Quincana lives on through its fossils, which continue to be studied by paleontologists around the world. Each new discovery adds to our understanding of this remarkable creature and the world it inhabited. The study of Quincana also provides important insights into the broader patterns of evolution and extinction, helping scientists to better understand how species adapt to changing environments and the factors that can lead to their decline. In modern times, the story of Quincana can inspire a sense of wonder about the natural world and its history. The prehistoric landscapes of Australia, once roamed by giant reptiles and megafauna, may be long gone, but the fossils of Quincana and other ancient creatures keep their memory alive, offering a glimpse into a world that once was. But with its peculiar adaptations and fearsome appearance, it's a remarkable example of the survival of life itself. The Quincana story, inked into rocks and soil across Australia's long history, is one driven by mystery and discovery. And as long as it remains perceived as such, it will continue to draw the attention and money of researchers and fossil enthusiasts from all around the world. Shifting the focus of science toward a deep past and, in the process, revealing whole new worlds in the present. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out some of our other videos on the megafauna that once roamed Australia. If you could please leave a like, that would help the video out in the YouTube algorithm. Consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell icon to be notified of when we upload. Thank you again for watching.